What's up everybody? It's your boy Tristan with Reptile Dysfunction coming at you again with another video. In today's video, we're talking about rats, breeding them, and breeding them on a smaller scale. So stay tuned, sit back, eat some popcorn, pet your snake, I don't know, cue the intro. So have you ever wondered what it's like having rats in your house? Maybe outside your house, what's it like breeding them? How hard it is? Do they smell? Do they not smell? What type of rats do you need to breed? I'm about to answer that in this video. So stay tuned. I'm gonna meet you in the rat room right now, set up a little bit, and we're gonna give you some good content. Love you guys. Relax. I have that ADHD mind. What's up everybody, we're in the rat room now. This is where I keep all my rats, both my African soft furs and my Norwegian rats. Four tier rack system right here. This is for my Norwegian rats. And I got my glass cages here for my ASFs. So if you're like me and you have a pretty sizable reptile collection and they eat rodents, you may want to think about breeding your own rats. One, it definitely saves money. Two, it's actually kind of fun. And three, most importantly, you know exactly what your rats are eating, therefore you know what your snakes are eating. You know that you're producing healthy rats and uh, you want nothing but the best for your snakes, right? So this right here is a Norwegian rat. This is pretty much a, a pretty standard rodent that most uh, snake keepers feed to their snakes. This is one of my breeder males. Uh, he goes in the top rack. The way I have my rats, I have a two to one. So two females to every one, one male. I like breeding the standard rats because it's a more popular rat and a lot more snake owners and ball python keepers feed these type of rats. So if anyone locally needs a rat, uh, I know that I can help them out, especially if I have extras. The way my setup is right now, specifically just for these Norwegian rats, I produce around uh, 48 uh, babies a month per tub and I have two colonies. So if you come take a look, I have one big male there, a female, another female, and then I have a little grow out female. I just didn't want her to be by herself. Uh, she was a failed feeding and I decided just to keep her. She's really cute too. But that is usually how I set it up. Norwegian rats, like I said earlier, I have a four tier uh, setup. I have one, two, three, four tubs. Uh, these are just some standard concrete mixing tubs that I got from Home Depot. And the rack I, itself, I, uh, I built with my uh, cousin Jared and it costed me all around about uh, 60 bucks to get to everything together, materials and all. It took about an hour to, to put together. So the way I have it set up, my first two racks or my first two tubs are my breeding colonies. So I have the, the males and the females in there and they're breeding and once the babies are weaned and I average about 48 babies per tub per month. Once those babies are weaned, I separate them and I put them on the bottom two. I go males and females. They're currently empty because my snakes ate them all. For watering, I don't use the, uh, the bottles for this setup, like these type of bottles right here. I don't really use it for this setup just because these rats pound through water and I just found it a lot easier. So I use the Reptile Basics uh, watering setup. I got the hose. I got four nozzles. I picked up a uh, five gallon bucket from Home Depot. I fill up the bucket and pretty much I just replace it every week when it's time to clean. So after I clean, obviously I have to set up the tub and this is how I do it. So I got my concrete mixing tub. I have these pellets. Now these are just some pine pellets. What the pine pellets do is basically absorb any moisture from urination, water, what it may be, and it helps with the smell. You don't really need much. I just throw a couple of handfuls in. And that should be enough. Spread it around a little bit. 
Next is the bedding. So I use this pine shaved bedding. It's, uh, it's minimal dust and that goes over the pine pellets. This is just, you know, bedding for them. Uh, the mom rats usually make nests out of them. It does not smell, it just smells, you know, like wood. I cover it up, I give them a good amount just cause like they like to burrow in it, they like to just play around. And now this tub is complete. So now I just put it in the rack. That simple. So after I clean the tubs, I like to check on the nozzles just so I know that they're not broken or leaking. You would hate to want to see a, a, a tub get overflown and then drown all your rats. On top, I have a uh, half inch chicken wire and I feed uh, all the rodents here at Reptile Dysfunction. I feed them the Missouri uh, rat diet and they love it. People breed rats different. No, no breeding rat setup is the same. It works for somebody, it may, it may not work for somebody else. I keep my ASFs in glass 10 gallon tanks. Some people may not like that, but I could really care less. My ASFs love it in here. We've had a couple of litters already, so we know that they're doing all right. I keep them in the 10 gallon tanks because they are notorious for chewing out of everything, chewing their water bottles. I can't tell you how many times I've had to replace these uh, plastic type water bottles just because they chew straight through it. ASFs are a lot different than regular rats. In my opinion, they're cleaner, they smell 10 times less, they produce a lot more babies. Just like the Norwegian rats, uh, the ASFs do also get Missouri uh, 6F, but I also substitute with a high protein dog food. Some people don't like that, some people do. For me, it's been great, they love it, they're getting big, and uh, I'm just gonna keep doing what works. Some cons about ASFs. ASFs definitely do not grow as quick as rats. So right here we have a one week to two week old rat uh, fuzzy. Compare that to a two week ASF uh, little pup. And you can just tell there is a massive uh, difference in the size. Now to some people, the fact that ASF rats in general just don't get as big could be a plus. As we all know, ball pythons can be a little picky and the plus with ASFs not getting super uh, big, super fast is if your ball python uh, skips a meal, that ASF definitely won't outgrow it within that week's time. Whereas rats, they grow really quick. At the same time, you'll hear many stories that if a ball python is, is off food, these ASFs are just irresistible to them. They absolutely love them, they smack them down. That is the case with my snakes. They do uh, love these ASFs. And uh, I do plan on hopefully switching fully to ASFs. The Norwegian rats get cleaned once a week, whereas the ASFs, they don't really need to be cleaned till about two, two weeks. And, and that's gonna change uh, if you talk to multiple different breeders. But they don't smell and uh, they thrive. All right, Jared, you got any more questions? Did I miss anything? So is it true that if you feed a ball python only ASFs that they won't eat a normal rat? That is a great question. You hear this all the time, guys. Uh, if your ball python eats, eats ASFs, it's only gonna eat ASFs. Now this may be true just for the simple fact that ball pythons are picky eaters and they absolutely love these ASFs. It's a case by case basis. For me, I feed my snakes both rats and ASFs. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I have heard in the past though, that if you feed it an ASF, it will stick to an ASF and, and that's, that's the only thing it'll eat. However, it is still very possible to switch from an ASF back to a rat. You're just gonna have to put the time in. Maybe uh, take some bedding from the ASFs and rub it on the rat that you wanna feed. Some uh, stores sell uh, ASF liquid. I really don't know what that is, but um, they, some people say that works. You just have to put the time in getting your snake to switch to regular rats if that's the route that you wanna go. Because I do know that ASFs are not uh, common everywhere. Not a lot of people know about them. They're a little bit more expensive to get, and in some states like California, ASFs are in fact illegal. Any more questions, Jared? So how long does it actually take for the female rats to have their babies? Uh, if your rat is uh, sexually mature, 
it'll take three weeks, approximately 21 days for her to uh, get pregnant all the way up to the time that she has her litter. So you can expect once a month, uh, roughly, that she will uh, lay her, uh, not lay, <laughs> rats don't lay eggs. So about once a month, she will have her litter of, uh, of pinkies. Any more questions? No. All right, man, sweet. Yeah. Thanks for your help. So yeah, guys, uh, I hope that gave you a little insight on what it is to breed on a small scale. It's super easy. I enjoy it. It's uh, it's not as bad as everyone uh, puts them out to be. I love the rats. I absolutely enjoy breeding them. Um, it kind of sucks that I have to feed them, but you know, the snakes are my priority. I said that this is what I wanted to do, and I have to uh, roll with that. So until next time, guys, make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, and tell me what else you guys want me to do. What other videos do you want? So once again, this is Tristan Reptile Dysfunction. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Peace.